All right, we've got a Norton's TT. This was the first Saturday I was in Adelaide. It's the Saturday before the tour down under started, so the Super Elliot's bunch comes up Norton's at a pretty hot pace, and I thought it was uh, time to tack on and see what time I could I could muster. And uh, this is the only Norton's I did hard, and the bunch was about 50, at least 50 dudes, because there's so many people in Adelaide. Um, for the two down under, so it was awesome to be in such a big bunch. And there was a solo attack mountain bot mounted by that dude, so we'll see if he's able to stay away for the whole whole hill climb. I'm sitting on this vegan dude's wheel um, that I hadn't seen before, and he, I think he knows Adelaide's roads pretty well, and he might have done some of these videos. Um, and as the bunch comes past, again, I'm doing, I was doing 10k an hour, and then. They come past at 30 and I have to do 600 watts to get up to speed to sit on the wheel and my legs were already filled with lactate so another it's a mistake I, I sort of make all the time and I need to be going at the speed of the bunch steadily before they come past. There's two vegan dudes, they're going to get dropped because they don't have enough protein and look at the cadence within the bunch and the cadence will dictate who will be at the front at the end of this climb. So BMC Shorts had insanely good cadence. He was spinning, even at 400 watts, he was, it just looks like he's not doing any effort. Because he's doing 400 right now, he's doing, what, 110 RPM maybe? And good seat position in the saddle. Um, so what should you, there's a bit of a lull now and nothing really happens, so we just move through the bunch and I just sit on um, Jiren Rider's wheel. But, if you're doing a TT and you want to do your best time, what, what stuff do you need to do? Well, A, don't bring two bottles of water filled with two litres you know, of water. B, tyre choice. I had a Maxxis Refuse tyre on the back. Not making excuses. I, you know, I, I get dropped because I get dropped, whatever. It doesn't matter what bike you have. Like, during I was on a bamboo bike, but... Oh, yeah, by the way, here. He, old mate's about to come back to us. <laughs> that didn't last long. Um... But if you want to do your best, best time, tyre choice matters. So Maxxis Refuse, which I had on for training, I wasn't going to change it out, obviously. I just didn't want to get a flat for the two weeks. But that's going to cost, that cost me probably five watts or whatever. And five, seven watts on a 15-minute effort or 14-minute effort can be the difference between holding the wheel and not holding the wheel in the last kilometre. And the, the difference between holding the wheel in the last kilometre and not holding the wheel in the last kilometre can be like 30 seconds because you've been left behind and you don't have the draft anymore. Um, so yeah, nice tight clothing. So BMC shorts, he's got a gilet on, didn't matter because he's you know super strong. So your fitness ultimately matters more than anything else. But having a gilet on on a 25k an hour average climb is, or a, a wind jacket that's puffy is going to cost you some watts as well. So tight clothing, light bike, take unnecessary stuff off the bike. You know, good tyres, cheap, uh, nice, uh, light tyres, and that almost matters more than bike weight, just about, especially on a 5% climb. So I averaged 316 watts for 14 minutes for this climb, which is a power PB for me, a massive power PB, and that's the beauty of being in a bunch and trying to hold a wheel, desperately trying to hold a wheel, is it forces you to hit PBs, especially if everyone around you is stronger than you. So... Um, this was on the back end of a, this was like my f fifth, 500th kilometre this week. And if I, if you're training solo, if I was solo going up Norton's after 500 k's in five days, I'm not going to be doing this wattage, am I? Because you're just not going to mentally, it's impossible. Whereas when you have that stimulus around you, it forces you to lift. And that's why stuff like these TTs are so good and why I wish Brisbane would have some more, um, would have stuff like this, but we don't really have the the hill culture, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to go through a few of my mistakes. So first off, my positioning within the bunch. So you can see the raised embankment on the right and the open opening to the left. So if you're sitting in the right-hand side of this line, you're probably getting a better sit. So look where Durian Rider's wheel is. He's got red, short, red gilet uh, in front of him on the right, me on his left, bunch in front of him completely sheltered whereas I have the left hand side a little bit of wind so maybe what that's what five watts or something 
So again, going to cost you if you're going for your best, best time. Also, when you're sitting right in the middle of the bunch, I feel like you just you just do get that perfect draft. Anyway, also Norton's is a, has a series of uh, hairpins and corners. And on a hairpin corner, the gradient differs greatly from the inside to the outside of the corner. So we'll see coming up in a bit... Um, the difference in wattage in terms of steadiness or spiking that you have to put out depending on the line you take. But yeah, basically, I don't know, the, the, the beauty of being in this bunch was you're not, you're not looking at your gum and you're not looking at power. You're just trying to go with the front wheel and not lose wheels. And the time goes so quickly. So even if you do get dropped um, after, say, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 8 minutes, doesn't matter. Even if you do get dropped... Um, you're still going to do your best time because you, you've been dragged along by the bunch so quickly. So see, I lost Blue Short's wheel. And what I should have done here is I should have put myself in between Vegan Velo, Giant Propel on the right and um, behind Durian Rider's wheel and shoved myself right in there. And that would have been a much better sit. Then I would have had, had perfect shelter. I would have been in the midline and I would have gone around the corner better and also, when you're on the left-hand side, you see this the slower rider coming back, you can get caught out behind those riders, have to slow stop pedaling for maybe even one second, and then you have to jump on the pedals and to get back onto the bunch. So look at my wattage here, and look at Jiren Rider's cadence on the outside line. So I had to do 500 watts, and then I get stuck behind uh, blue TCR here, coming back, had to slow pedal, and the bunch has accelerated it, you know, 500 watts, and I had to move around that slow rider. So that mistake there, where I was sitting in the bunch, now my legs are filled with lactate and my heart rate's at maximum, just from positioning rather than being on the right-hand side where you just had just a steadier run of it. It's not going to be easy. It's still, like, hard, but you just have... You don't have that crazy acceleration that you need to do when you're already at the limit. So... That hairpin, when I come back to Norton's next time, I'll realise that hairpin's sort of the signal for go time. I mean, we, we didn't do... We weren't going that hard, I think, for the first um, seven minutes, but now the pace is, soup, is, is on, and dudes are coming back on the left-hand side pretty fast. Um, and I, I think just paying attention is key the, and reactions. So you see pros, they're constantly looking at okay, what wheel am I sitting on? Is the dude in front of me tired? Are they strong? Are they holding the wheel easily in front of them? Um, are they being consistent in holding the wheel? And I think the dude I was sitting behind here, he was really fit. I don't think he was under that much pressure. So he kind of let the wheel, he'd let the wheel go a little bit and then surge back on. So we're doing like 500 to go around these riders. But then him doing that, that concertina effect really affected me, who I was on the limit fitness-wise. Um, so I was trying to then went forward to try and find a more consistent sit. Whereas the it's the middle of the road, the vegan velo dudes, they seem to just have a much more consistent run and smooth. Um, but yeah, just looking at who's in front of you and how they're doing. Because if a dude in front of you is struggling a little bit and he leaves a gap and you have to close it, I've said this in other vids, then it can be all over for you if you're already at maximum heart rate. But yeah, now we're trucking along pretty well. Um, just tried to keep it at 90. I think I averaged 97 cadence for this, this climb, which is pretty good. I think I could, could get it even a little bit higher. Um, like the BMC shorts dude, his cadence, that's sort of, that's goals cadence. Um, but yeah, now we're at about nine minutes in. I was looking down at my Garmin and I was starting to mentally mentally have a bit few weak thoughts. Um, it's really starting to hurt, <laughs> to hurt. And I just had to shut my mind off and I should just, I've, I've got to put myself, just think hold the wheel and get on better wheels and I should have gone up and sat on Dan's wheel. He was in the vlog today in the blue Castelli jersey. And I should have moved up to sit right behind him. But anyway, I'm sitting behind a, a big dude anyway, so didn't really matter but I don't know I should have should have just moved up right to the midline rather than when you're on the back of the bunch there's that bailout option of like oh there's no one behind me I can just fall off this would be 
um, you know, this wouldn't be too hard. Whereas you see what Phil's doing, the wheel poking itself out in the middle just there. He, um, he's getting a much better sit. He's getting lower. He's in between two lines. And you just get a much smoother, smoother cadence and you don't have the left, the left hand wind. Um, what else, what else is there to say really? I don't know, I just wish, I wish Brisbane had this sort of hills culture. I mean, we have Mount Me, but it's so far away that it's impractical or unrealistic to expect there to be a, a weekly Saturday morning 50 man TT up at, um, Mount Coof is probably a bit steep for this sort of thing. Um, anyway, leave, if you live in Brisbane, leave a comment down below of your ideas of what could be a safe TT um, in a similar one that's in a similar way to Norton's that's every Saturday and Thursday nights because we're doing 22k an hour racing each other, uh, unsanctioned UCI race 2.1. But if if you crash, if if you clip a wheel, what's the worst that can happen? Really, you know, probably the worst worst that could happen is you 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 know chip a bone or something. Um, the inexperience here so you see I leave the gap the GoPro um, foreshortens it a little bit but I should know if there's a bunch in a criterion coming around a corner or a hill climb TT going around a hairpin there is going to be a surge as that hairpin is exited um, every time so Cycling Maven did this on a video once when you go around the corner I should place my wheel on the outside of the rider in front of me and overlap that wheel just so that there's never a gap that even opens up and I can keep my wattage much smoother rather than he's, you know, he, he soft pedals around the corner then goes up to 500, then I soft pedal around the corner then I go up to 520 and you, do, you sort of have that effect down the line and if you're the 10th rider you're just having to do a monster surge to keep on. But I think it was single file now pretty much, it was cooking along pretty nicely, 25k an hour up 5% and um, 12 minutes left. So even if you if you get to this stage with a bunch up Norton's or whatever climb you're doing, even if you get dropped and blow up you, and crawl your way to the finish line, you're going to do a PB because the bunch has dragged you so fast that you just, that you can't, whatever you do on your own is just not going to be as quick as that. So... Here I um, should have stayed on Phil's wheel. I was like, I let this guy close. I was like, I said, oh, he had the wheel, but then I'm not really drafting anyone here. And then sitting behind a guy dancing, I should have sat on Phil's wheel because it's strung out single file now. And you see the gap starting to open up, and <laughs> it was hammer time. And all the little accumulated mistakes that I made. Um, they added up to me getting dropped at about this point. Whereas if, if you do everything perfectly and your fitness is up to scratch, then you can set PRs and set good times. Whereas you make, make, make mistakes, you're going to pay for it, especially when the dudes at the front of this are obviously stronger than me and fitter than me, so I can't be affording to make mistakes. Um, so I need you, I need to be roasted in the comments below. Leave a comment below with your most abusive comment about how I'm weak, how I shouldn't have got dropped, how I should close my account down, how I should sell my bike, because um, I, I need that fire in my life. But fortunately, <laughs> I was like, no, I'm going to crawl into the line, just trying to hold. See, I'm, I'm still doing decent wattage, 280 to 270, but... If, if you just hold the wheel, you can... I mean, and me doing that wattage means that I could have stayed on that wheel if I wasn't um, a little baby. So, but you see the difference in that wattage in the bunch and that wattage solo between... that They're already up the road. You, can, you can't even see them anymore. Um, that group ended up doing a sub-14. They did 13.57. I ended up doing 14.17, which I was a little bit disappointed with. I wanted to do a sub-14, but... Oh, well, as always next year. Um, and fortunately, I had this guy to sit on. He wasn't in the bunch, but we came around him, and I think he ramped it up, which is pretty good. And as we're coming to the end of the segment, I still didn't really know where the segment ended, and I assumed it was It's just like three metres after the comm sign. But anyway, this Linkazine dude told me to the finish line. He was my saviour. 
and I managed 14, 17. So leave a comment what your best 15-minute um, power is, what your best Norton's time is, or whether you just think I suck at cycling. That would be good. Thank you. And crawl in my way, crawl in my way. There's a great climb. Like Norton's is fantastic, and 14 minutes, you're already on top of the hills, and you've got so many options. So... Rolling through to what Cycling Maven um, somewhat condescendingly labelled the vegan corner. That go vegan dude on the left on the propel was super strong. I think he's been racing for a while. And that's the good thing about a hill climb TT like that. Everyone groups up at the top, so even if you get dropped and you're three minutes behind or whatever, you can still have a chat and join back up anyway. And compare what you did, <laughs> how you found it, um, and have a chat and see... I don't know, that's the great thing about cycling and, and hill climbing. You just can learn from other people watching. And then Harley's telling me that I'm weak and that I need to improve my mental game. And um, that's definitely right. So I've got to block it out, stop looking at my Garmin. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Ciao.